Audio is recording, video is recording, doing another episode of the Ski Rex Media Podcast with my fake plastic slate. Well, it's Friday morning here at Ski Rex Media HQ. Um, If you're listening to this on a day it goes up, it's actually Wednesday, so good Wednesday morning to those of you in the future. This is Tim from SkiRexMedia.com once again doing the Ski Rex Media podcast, not just in audio, but in video version. We're going to keep this up, see if we can can make this work, work like this. You know, I've got a... I got a few compliments saying the video was pretty good. They got a few that say the audio was pretty good. So we'll just keep doing both, you know, and then you can choose your preferred way. Last week I did a whole write up of the origin story of skirexmedia.com as well. Um, the origin of the Ski Rex. I did that because I was wearing my Ski Rex shirt last week, but I am not. But notice I still have the orange because it is my favorite color. And today's hat is the Las Vegas Golden Knights. No, it's not skiing, but you know what? I don't have any ski hats anymore. I would love to have that be a bit. I would love to be doing this, doing the video version, have a different hat every time. And I can do that, um, but they won't all be geared to winter sports. Like this one is obviously a hockey hat, and that's awesome. I used to have a lot more um, skiing hats from the days when I worked at Mount Snow back in the 90s. And those have all since disappeared, been destroyed, stolen, given away, something. They're all gone. And although I do believe in downsizing and the minimalist lifestyle, I will probably not stop collecting hats. Um, So if you're ever looking for a birthday gift or Christmas or whatever, you know, hat is always a good way to go. But anyway, enough of that silliness. Let's get on to today's topic. Um, The topic for today comes about because I got taken bad by a viral video um, this past week. Now, I did a piece on it. I, I, I wrote it up and... Uh, That's linked in the description, video description, audio description. It's in the description. Check it out. Um, But you might have seen it. It's a video of a woman being chased by a bear while snowboarding, and she's kind of oblivious to it. This woman is just kind of, you know, listening to her music, riding down the hill, doing her thing, and then there's a bear chasing her. So I put this up. Uh, I thought it was kind of cool. Didn't think much of it. Was kind of taken in by the fact that there was a woman being chased by a bear, and she didn't notice it. Now, I don't hide the fact that I enjoy wildlife. I love animals. So part of me was taken in by the fact that there's a friggin' bear running down a ski slope. Um, Part of me was taken in by the how the hell could she be oblivious to this? But we'll get into that. That's actually part of today's topic. That actually is today's topic. Um, But I was taken into it, found out it was just some viral video that was done with CGI. I was called out. Everybody said, hey, you know this is fake, right? I did not. Apparently, it's a few months old, too. Apparently, this is an old one. I guess the same. I did see the one. If it's A uh, few people said it's the same as people who were doing the same experiment with sharks. I did see that. I did not realize this one was made. I did not realize it was done by the same people. Um, but it looks pretty cool. It looks good. I, I enjoy it. And... Uh, I want to talk about a piece of that that you can get serious about. And pardon me for not uh, for losing my train of thought there for a second. But I want to talk about the safety involved. And no, not the safety of bears. Um, we all know how to act around bears. Don't touch them. Don't pet them. If you see them coming, get out of their way. Leave them alone. Um, even as far, I mean, again, it also depends on the bear. You know, the common black bears we have here in Vermont are just giant dogs. That's a joke. Don't go pet a black bear. Don't go mess with the black bear. Keep your distance. Take your picture. Move along. Though generally not something to really be afraid of. If you have a grizzly bear running you down while you're skiing or riding, then you might have a problem. Um, You might just want to, you know, give thanks for your life to whatever God you believe in and kiss your ass goodbye because the grizzly could probably eat you. In fact, I think grizzlies got four hunters this year in the Midwest. 
So there you go. But we're not talking about bear safety. Maybe we can talk about that as the season turns back to summer. We all start getting back out into the hiking trails and everybody's coming out of hibernation and whatnot. But we're talking about mountain safety. And and it's just this one thing for today. We can talk about other parts of mountain safety as well. Skier, rider safety, um, in resort, backcountry, whatever you want. But in particular, in this video, though fake... The woman was riding with earphones in, listening to music, and that's great. People do it all the time. I don't do it. Um, I like being in nature. I like being outside. So when I am outside, at least for for skiing, I want to be aware of the sounds of nature. I would like to see some kind of animal other than a bird on a ski slope, but it's probably never going to happen. But anyway, Um, but we can... You know, some people wear, and again, apologize for the loss of train of thought, but some people do wear their earphones and listen to music. And like I said, I'm only guilty of that when I'm on foot walking or maybe when I was jogging back in the day. Um, typically, I don't use them when I'm doing a sport, especially skiing. Why? Um, I, like I said, want to be one with nature. Secondly, it's a safety issue, I think. Not a big one. Like, I'm not going to go off on people should not wear headphones and should not listen to music while they're riding and skiing and all this. You totally can. Um, This is geared more to the idea of anybody who cranks their music. Now, I love listening to loud music. I turn my music up. I, I love going out at night and driving around with the windows open. I I typically don't do it in the winter, but you know, and, and cranking that, that hard rock and that heavy metal. I I don't hide that. I like those. uh, I prefer those two genres of music, uh, rock music, but you have to keep your earphones turned down when you're skiing. Why? Well, one, a bear could be chasing you down the mountain and you need to get the hell out of there. Um, two, there are people coming down behind you. Now, if you're one of the people who's out in the backcountry quite a bit and tend to be out there by yourself or one or two people, you can pretty much disregard what I'm saying. To a point, you're definitely going to want to be able to hear um, what's going on around you. Again, for animals, maybe, you know, for avalanche safety. I don't know how much um, sound plays a part in that, in avalanche safety. That That's a good question. That's what I'd like to have answered. I'm going to have to check into that. Um, because I know they make sounds. Anything that's moving makes a sound, um, but can sound alert it, alert a person to it, like if it's behind you or if it's going to start. I don't know. We're going to have to check into that. But the point is that you really don't need music and have to worry about other people if you're the only person out there and you're got you know you're in this wide open backcountry. You know, it's not something we have here in Vermont. You know, we do have a backcountry scene, but it's not those big wide open mountains you see in the videos from you know, uh, the, the Rockies or, you know, up into, um, you know, the Alps, you know, the, these big backcountry areas, off-pissed areas that, um, you know, you're out there by yourself or with just your group or just a helicopter uh, for that matter. So that might not even be a problem. Uh, but in, in resort, and that's, you know, it doesn't matter if you're in, you know, on just any old trail or in park, it's always a good idea to keep the music turned down. Now, do I have a problem with it if you keep it turned up? No, that's your business. And again, I'm not trying to come down to anybody. This is just just my safety tip to you, the viewer and the listener. There is a bit of courtesy, a bit of common courtesy when you're coming down the hill to alert someone in front of you if you need to. Now, if you're on one of these big, wide open trails where this person is just doing these tight little carves over on the right and you go way out to the left, it's really not a big deal. It's not an issue. Um, it's in the tighter spaces and, and I can tell a story. I, I've had this happen. I'm sure, you know, anybody out there listening or watching has had this happen too. The, um, you're coming down and this is, this, this is actually particularly useful when you're coming down behind a snowboarder because their back is turned to the side. And I think we all know, you all know where I'm getting at. If you're approaching a snowboard from behind, it's tight, say backside, you know, alert the person to being on their backside because they can't see you. Um, When you're coming down a hill with a skier, you say on your left, on your right. This also works for bike trails, hiking trails. Um, You know, even if you're walking your dog in the dog park on your left, on your right, you know, it's it's, it's very simple. Common courtesy, big safety thing because you don't want to crash. You aren't going to make, well, you most likely aren't going to crash into the person in front of you, but if that person doesn't know you're coming, they might run into you. Um, Now, one could say, well, the person who's in front, the one who's downhill, 
you know, how are they supposed to know someone's coming up? Again, you can hear them coming. Um, and if someone is polite enough to say on your left or on your right, you'll know they're coming. But if they have their music turned way up, they can't hear it. And again, not a huge, big problem. I'm not trying to be a parent. I'm not trying to be dad. Although people have called me a dad in recent recent times and I don't always get it. But I'm not trying to be a dad. <laughs> I'm just trying to be safe. You know, I know I've had the problem where I'd be coming down and say, hey, backside or on your left, go past them. They still almost whack into me. I did my job and then they're pissed at me and have said something, you know, throwing the finger and being like, hey, mother chicken, you, you know, you almost hit me. And they're right to the point. Again, I'm supposed to be watching them below, but we're all friends out here and we're all trying to do the same thing. So if I say on your left, Make sure you can hear me, please. And don't be a dick if you didn't, because that's the first thing I ask. I say, dude, you got your music turned up? And they say, what? And I say, exactly. You couldn't hear me coming. And again, mountain safety is more than just that. You know, you can't be riding straight down. You know, you can't just be riding down there, you know, doing your thing or on a snowboard ride. And I can't really do it. Well, I guess I can do a visual snowboarding. I don't know. Um, that's the best I got. But, and again, sorry audio people, that was a video. I'm trying to balance the video and the audio shows, the portions. They're the same show, if you close your eyes, they're exactly the same. It's just these people over here get to watch me do it. Um, see how animated my hand gestures are. Anyway, um, back to my point, which I totally lost in, hey, Ski Rex Media Rantcast. Um, so you're going down, and I totally lost my point. I got my point back. So you're riding down and you're not supposed to be, you know, if you're going straight down, if you're riding snowboard like the last visual was, you can't be just looking up over your shoulder. Like that's unsafe to be looking behind you because it's a forward motion sport unless you are riding switch and then it's a rear motion sport, but that's a whole other that's a whole other safety issue. People on the lower the mount the below you have the right of way. You have to be careful of them. The only time you can really look up the mountain is if we're going down and someone's coming this way. If you're going to cross trail, you have to look both ways before crossing, just like on the street. So it is, you are correct if you are saying, well, the person behind me, so if my music's cranked to 11, cranked to 12, then it doesn't matter. But if you're cutting these wide carving S turns, just, you know, taking up an entire trail, especially if it's a tight one. Especially if it's only like 15, 20 feet across, you know, you, you, you do have to, you, you have to do your part and we all have to do our parts and we all have to keep each other safe. And I, I know that's kind of a, you know, a, a friendly tree hugger ideal or whatever you want to call it. But we, we, we do have to look out for everybody because I don't want to go home in an ambulance. I know you don't want to go home with an ambulance. I know people listening don't want to go home in an ambulance. That sucks. I don't like getting hurt on the mountain at all. And I typically don't. But I have had those issues where people have, you know, I've been running, I coming down, say, hey, on your left, and I go as far left as I can. They still almost whack into me, forgetting that, you know, the rest of the world does exist and forgetting that, you know, cranking your music. I mean, damaging your hearing. Yeah, we could get into that. But again, who am I to say anything about that? Because when I'm in the right situation, I crank that metal to 11, man. I, I, I listen to Godsmack, man. That's my favorite band. And other hard rock and heavy metal and other rock genres, ska and whatnot. And you can get that stuff going pretty loud. So to the point, and the point was to the video, the woman is oblivious of a bear. I don't want to be ob oblivious to a bear. I don't want you to be oblivious to a bear. Keep the headphones turned down. Keep them turned down, please. You'll be doing yourself a favor. You'll be doing you know a favor for everybody else um, around the mountain. Uh, plus, you know, equipment is louder than music typically. But it's when it's in your ears. For instance, um, let's let's uh, let's talk about my old home mountain, Mount Snow, again, real quick. I, you know, we all hashtag Ski the East, Mount Snow. We know, you guys know um, that that's where I that's where I honed my craft, all my skiing stuff, and where I learned about the ski industry. Um, on Bear Trap, it's a bump run. It's in, it's in the Sunbrook area. It's around the back of the mountain. Um, you can get there if you're a, if you're a park rider. Um, you can go into Corinthia. Take the, uh, I don't know what the lift is called now. I can't remember what it was called then. But you take the lift up, you take a left, you go down, 
and you get into the Sunbrook area, and then there's um, Bear Trap, and it has its own little. I think it's still a double chair. I think it's a it's a double chair for this trail, and it basically is for this trail in particular. And it's a bump run, and people love it. And it's got the double diamonds, and people love skiing bumps. And you know, more power to you and your knees for skiing those bumps. I got no want or reason for it, but. Um, it bumps music. It has speakers, or at least it did back in my day, and I'm, I'm assuming it still does. Um, you know, they, they rock out a little bit on there. They got speakers, but that sound now goes out into the open air, and it's, you know, you can hear it, but it's almost like a background music. You put the things in your ears. That's that's in your ears. That's the first, you know, I, I don't know how to explain it. I'm not an audiologist. I'm not a sound engineer. I'm not a sound recorder. Um, more than this. So I, I don't really know. I can't really explain the science to you. What I can say, if, if they're in your ears, that's going to be all you can hear versus what's being out, you know, out just ambient noise and, and another, another noise that's out in the open. So the equipment is louder than those speakers, but it's not louder than your earphones. And by equipment, I mean snowmobiles. We know snowmakers are running around all day. Um and most of the night at those mountains. And uh, one of these days I'll tell you about our, our, our snowmaker lore. It's a whole goofy thing. It's kind of funny, actually. Fiction. All totally fiction, but definitely, definitely fun. Um, but there's the snowmakers out running around on snowmobiles. There's ski patrol running around out on snowmobiles. And they need to go. They, they're they like an ambulance, man. They need to go. You need to get out of their way. Um, there could be groomers anywhere. There could be snow guns turned on. Um, if you've ever just run into a snow gun that you heard coming but wasn't didn't realize it was around the next bend, you know, if you're not ready for it, it kind of sucks. You have to be mindful of these things. And if you want to hear a horror story, I can tell a horror story. Um, it had nothing to do with sound. Just somebody got run over by a groomer, and it wasn't the, the outcome wasn't pretty. It was one night. It was someone was up on the hill who shouldn't have been, and it was just a mess. Um, but these things are dangerous. Um, skiing is inherently a dangerous sport. So having all senses available, touch, feel, sight, hearing, uh, I guess taste <laughs> could play a part somewhere. Don't eat the yellow snow. There you go. Um, and actually don't eat the snow under the skis cause that wax comes off and it's just, ugh. but you know, and then there's the acid rain and all that stuff. I don't know if what, if that's real or not, but whatever. Um, you know what I mean now? Anyway, but hearing and sight and touch are probably your three most important senses. And to take any one of those away puts everybody at a disadvantage, um, is my point. Um, so keep the sound turned down because you don't want to be, you know, rocking out, rocking out, rocking out, come down, whip a tight corner, and boom, there's the groomer that you didn't hear coming, that you weren't ready for, and then get run over by it. And those things, I mean, I guess they could stop pretty good. I guess a tracked vehicle like that should... No, I mean, again, I don't know if that's true. We'll have to ask a, a groomer driver um, how quickly they stop. And I'm sure if they see you, they will slam on the brakes the best they can. But just like in a car or a train or a truck or anything else, they're not going to be able to stop fast. Uh, same with a snowmobile. Now, they're, they're, they're not flying up these hills and down these hills. They're being safe. But if you don't hear them and you come around the bend and you whack into them, that's on you. So you gotta, I say keep those ears open. Again, I'm not telling you what to do. I would never do such a thing and I won't not ride with you because you got your earphones in. I'll still ride with you, you know, all day. I had friends who do it, but typically like one of my friends would do with the one in one out. That was his deal. Um, some of the guys I've ridden with and girls, you know, don't, don't want to be sexist now. Um, they, they have, you know, ridden with both in, but keep it, you know, kept it turned down. Um, be safe about it. Don't crank it. I know you love the loud music. I know you love the loud rock and roll. I know you love the you know the loud hip hop. You know, uh, maybe you ride to classical. That would be kind of awesome. I, I love the classical music. So if you ride to that, that's great too. Um, but be safe. You know, that was a that was a twenty minute you know minus when I lost my train of thought there. That was a twenty minute run on just being safe by keeping your earphones turned down. And I personally just like I said, I don't ride with them in. Um, if I do have them in, it might be at most for the lift ride if I'm by myself and really bored. But that doesn't happen much. If I'm out there, I'm not bored. And on the lift, I'm, you know, unless I happen to get a chair by myself, um, I do like to ski on Monday and Tuesday. So that could happen. But on a weekend, you know, if you're like me, you're talking to whoever's sitting next to you, unless they're on the phone or something. Um, which 
brings up an interesting point. You know, maybe we'll talk about this. I want you to think about this because as I keep testing um, ways to bring people on the show, what do you think about those screens in the safety bar? You know, you lower the bar and boom, there's the screen. And they have a lot of pros, but I think they might have some cons too. So let's think about that. If that's something you're interested in talking about, you know, let me know. And as I can get people on the show, I'm still testing that. You know, like I said, we'll, we'll talk about the, you know, screen time. We'll talk about those uh, screens in the bars, um, the lift bar, the chair bar, and uh, the safety bar. And uh, we'll talk about using phones. I don't use my phone when I'm skiing. Um... You know, it's, it's usually, you know, an action camera or even back, goodness, before like GoPro got popular and got really big, I, I took a regular camera um, and would take pictures or um, I actually had a uh, DVD recordable camera that I would take. And uh, let me tell you something, that camera was only like, you know, about the size of, uh, it would fit in the palm of my hand, but it was still bigger than a GoPro and very cumbersome and not nearly as easy to get ski video. Um but anyway, that's for a different day. I was trying. The point I was trying to get across today was be safe, and it was a function of seeing that video and a woman oblivious to a bear, which obviously wasn't real. But don't be oblivious to everybody else on the mountain. Keep your music turned down. Keep your head up. Keep your eyes moving. You know, keep your feet underneath you the best you can. Do what you can to keep yourself safe. Do what you can to keep other riders and skiers safe. Um, do what you can to keep the snowmakers and the groomers safe. Uh, it's a dangerous sport. It really is, and you know, any one of us can step out on that mountain any day, and it doesn't matter where you ski. If you hashtag ski the East, hashtag ski the Rockies, hashtag ski California, hashtag ski the Alps or Canada, hashtag Canada. Um, you know, it doesn't matter where you ski. Be as safe as you can, and you know, in, in any of those areas, you can get hurt. You step out on that mountain, you can be hurt in a minute. So be safe. Keep each other safe. I think that's the point I tried to get across. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, another episode of the Ski Rex Media Rant Cast, in which this time you get to see me lose my train of thought. So there's probably a cut somewhere in here that's gonna look bad, but we'll try it out anyway. As you can see, I still haven't had my don't have my lighting issues sorted out. We're gonna see if I have the audio recording sorted out a little bit better so it sounds better. Last week's didn't sound terrible, but we're gonna see if this week sounds a little bit better. All right, so. Tim from SkiRexMedia.com. Take a look in the description so you can find the Facebook page, the Twitter page, the YouTube page if you're listening to this on audio, the audio links if you're watching it on video. All kinds of links in there to um, interact and be part of the SkiRex Media community. Um, I love emails. SkiRexForever at gmail.com. That's the number four. S-K-I-R-E-X, the number four ever at gmail.com. It's down there. You don't have to memorize it as I say it. Look in the description. Look down. Like what you see. Subscribe to what you see or hear. Like what you see or hear. Share it with your friends. Let's see if we can build this up. Let's see if I can do this well enough to get an audience. It means I'm doing something right. And maybe we can start making some money. Look in the description. Speaking of which, because I'm trying out Patreon. I got the merch shop with a shirt that's only here until it's a jack-o'-lantern with the logo. SRM walking billboard. Um, it's a jack-o'-lantern. It says happy Halloween. It's only going to be there till Halloween. Anyway, all that aside, look in the description. You'll get it. This is Tim from SkiRexMedia.com. Once again, have a good Friday because it is Friday. Have a good Wednesday. If you're, you know, when you listen to this on Wednesday or if it's days later, have a good day there. Um, enjoy the outdoors this weekend. It's snowing friggin' everywhere except here in New England and in the South. Um, so get out there if you can. The race to open is about to have a winner. I'll see you out there during the winter when New England opens. All right, laters.